I like when Richard goes on his rants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people get very offended because some people are like legit it's not their fault that they didn't grow up with their dad. Like yesterday. <laughs> like yesterday. <laughs> it's like legit not their fault. So it's like, I'm like, like yesterday. <laughs> nah, I ain't like this. Jesus. 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 What did you say yesterday? Who are we missing? He was, he was Alex, making fun of Kelly. Kobe. Kobe. Is, is it like a second week? Yeah, well, I'm second. Killing, yeah. And then oh, this Alex, is I'm wondering if she's church. I know, but she, she normally. It's at 10. I thought it was the answer. <coughs> Alex, did you think they send their people to ice cream or was it just a Yeah, it's not different for ice cream. Seven and one will be not Is Keith in Max's office or it's supposed to be? Keith? Do you know what Keith is? Wait, yeah. Keith Hill? He always is like the walk, but I go down to the Yeah. 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 I'm with you get on a call with Joy. Like, hey, Joy, Danny's here, bro. What are you doing? Are you still? I don't know what I could have said that made him think that. Oh, she, she said, you got to be so much. Typically, just uh, text me. She's at 15 minutes. Okay. Because you're, you're like, if you did 64 sales and only you got paid on 51 in retail, walk me through that. I don't remember doing 64 sales. I was confused about that, too. The 64 sales that were on the chart. Yeah. Well. Okay, so. Did you put them to clean, bro? No, they just did it. I'm not even sure. So Jacoby's late. Mm -hmm. And then these two girls were late. At least they did try it. Yeah. And Ami just quit. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else? And then Alex? Alex? Is anyone else missing? Sharon's out of town. Sharon's out of town. She's in California. Listen. Dude, you guys got like how many? Two weeks left? Mm -hmm. You little birds. You guys have a place? Yeah. You I got approved. Yeah, approved. Mm -hmm. When do you pick up the keys? The first one. Right? Do first. Because I would have to pay extra crap because I was moving May 530. Right. Do first, first is perfect. perfect. First yeah. And you can leave a day later if you need to. What about you? Uh, Jordan. When do you pick up the keys? Uh, when I let me know. So I already uh, sent in my pay stuff. So you're not approved yet? Uh, no. no. I don't know where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not a <laughs> She applied. I applied. Yes, my background went through. And then you wrote oh, wait, no, the confirmation. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, I'm also in the same You guys figured out that three thousand dollars thing they were trying to get you to do. We're good. Okay, so I got a good a good uh, a meeting. Is that okay? Yes. I think it's good. He just missed uh, Richard. So no, I would no. recommend you take notes, and if you don't take notes, then Hello you can, notes will be taken. You don't. You don't have to. Though. So. I where's my mark? Leaders versus not top leaders. And let's describe that because you might think a top leader is a person that's been here for X amount of time or a veteran leader. Um, and it's not necessarily that. Or you might think it could be the pin, right? So I have a level two pin. So then that makes me a top leader. That only makes you a top leader in your head, right? Do, we, do you guys agree? Yes. Like you can get be a level two and also suck. Yes. And um, what I want you guys to think is like, hey, how, how am I guiding people with my actions and my results, not with my words? That's what a level two, that's what, I mean, that's what we're looking at for a level two. Because then you, you can have owners that talk all this big game. Some of them get on Larry's call on Sunday morning and they are like asking all these questions and then that's the last time you hear from them because they don't do anything else. So I want you guys to really think like, hey, 
how do I guide people? A top leader is a person or a level two, in my opinion, a person that guides people with their words and actions. Sorry, with their actions and results and not with their words. You guys understand the difference? So if you're in the middle of the circle all day and you're always getting people's attention and you're, you're really good at, you know, getting the room together and all that, but then you don't have any results and your team looks the exact same that it looked a month ago or worse, um, you're never really high rolling, then it's pretty obvious that you're, does that make sense? So a top leader doesn't mean that because you're in this room and you're level two, you're a top leader, in my opinion. You could be, you should be, but it doesn't mean that you are. Does that make sense? Yes. Also, a top leader doesn't have to be anybody that, you don't have to qualify by being here a certain amount of time. It's about, it's about the way you think and it's about the way you act. Right, so some people come and start, and they're immediately top leaders, and and they're not even promoted to leadership, but they're top leader. They're, the way they think is like a top leader. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna put some some differences, but but here's another thing to think about, okay? And, and think about your life. And uh, so most of you guys at this point, you're like, you're spending a lot of time with us, <clears throat> and some of your best friends, I'm gonna guess, are people that work in the business, right? People that you spend time with outside of work are people that are <clears throat> in the business. I'm guessing, okay? Unless you're ma maybe married, obviously that, that's different. But is that, would you guys say that's accurate? Do you guys see that a trend of people that are here for a few months, they get into the culture and now they're, they're friends with us? Yes. Do you guys see that or no? <clears throat> cool. Yes. So another thing to think about is if you, if you spend more time with your cross line than you spend with your upline, then you're probably hiding because um, there's, there's, that doesn't make any business sense, right? So if you have, oh, but my cross line's my friend. Yeah, that's fine, whatever. But your cross line's never gonna call you out or push you to the next level. So if you think about it like this, you or your teams, right? People in, under you, they spend more time with cross line than they do with upline. It's because they're hiding. There's nothing, they, they, they're, does that make sense, hiding? Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to think about that. And I want you to help use that culture. Like, that was one of the hardest things for me to work with, and I'm still working with, with Avon because she was always the best cross line and that was always helping us. But like it was not until Chloe showed up, like she was never like best friends with her downline, which is what you need to do. You need to be best friends with your people. And sometimes those people are new or awkward or you don't like them or they're not your personality. So you have to spend all this time with people that are under you until that you've raised their level of confidence to where you actually like them as a person. Does that make sense? Because sometimes you just, you obviously like spending a lot of time with, you know, people in this room because they, they already have the confidence, they get your inside jokes. And then if you poke them a little bit, they're gonna respond because they're competitive too. Does that make sense? But it's a lot harder to actually be friends with your with your downline because, but which is by the way, but, but that's also what's required. Um, and when you get to that point, you, you'll enjoy the business a lot more because you're being best friends with people that you can coach and influence. So it's a different type of relationship versus, I love my crossline friend owners like Max <clears throat> or Raphael or uh, other people, um, but my best friends are owners that we've promoted, like and it, legitimately. Like some of the owners that we have, I don't like them that, that much, but it's okay. But like yesterday, I, I'm going to Tyler's wedding, right? And it's like, I realize there's like 20 people there and, and, and I'm one. So I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I, I'm Tyler's friend, but, but I'm also upline to him. So we created a good connection, right? Um, or the same with, uh, uh, with Alante and Tracy or with Danny, he's one of my best friends. So how can you get to the point to where your downline is your best friends and you're spending, but you're also spending more time with your upline because your cross line is never gonna get you anywhere. So I want you guys to do a mental exercise of yourselves and your team. Like, hey, who am I spending the most of my time with? My free time, wherever, things that are not on the calendar, right? Who do I call? And it's normal to spend some cross line time. Like when I first started, I think it was, who did I go with for, I think it was with Danny, somebody, and then we, we, go, we went to go get a beer or something to eat to Dallas and then Tracy was there. Um, and people cross line hang out together at the beginning when they're new, but if, if they have a strong upline, like if you're a strong upline to them, 
you're gonna spend as much time personal as you can with them because you know that connection is important, especially when you don't like them and they're not your personality. You know what I mean? Like for Alejandro to, to, to build a relationship with a guy like a Frankie, which is the total opposite personality of him, it's hard. But that's really, <coughs> that's what's required to build a massive team, I think. But it's also, think about it, it's hard, quote unquote, like, it's harder to go get a job for 40 years. And it's harder to go get a degree than you, you don't get forgiven. So anyway, top leader versus not top leader. Forget about your level. Your level two, it doesn't matter. Forget about how long somebody's been here. Somebody, some of the worst <coughs> leaders are the people that get crusty and they've been here for the longest and they don't grow. And you'll hear other offices say like, yeah, I got these leaders, they're like crusty because they've been here for a year and you don't see any growth. So now all they start is bringing the belief down of the office because people will ask you, hey, how long you been here? You know, I've been here for a year and how far until you get promoted? And they're like, ah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that hurt, that happens, that happens, but, but, it's, but it's not good, right? So top leader versus not top leader, forget the timeline they've been around, forget the, the pin, and just think about how much they, like what they think and what they do, uh, and not so much what they say. So um, things that top leaders do versus maybe amateur leaders or stuff like that, okay? So um, like newer leaders use hard closing tactics versus understanding and difference. Okay, so anybody know what I mean by that? So when you're when you're interviewing people, you're you're like you're you're excited to a point that you're closing them, and you're trying to get them in because we're trying to grow. But then you're like you're not showing any indifference, so you come off desperate, and you don't realize that you're being a little awkward. Does that make sense? Like you're not understanding the concept of the philosophy of like. Like, hey, we love you, we want you, but we just really don't need you here. And you're selling yourself more to them than, than you're making them sell themselves to you because you're so desperate to build a team. Does that make sense? Does it? Yeah. <coughs> uh, what I want you to like, think, yeah. Just like, like top leaders are different and hardcore types are just like bullet points in general. Um, I'm trying to make a chart, so it's not like a you're, little... You're trying to do a chart? Yeah, I don't have a chart. But um, <laughs> so top, you... top leaders would use indifference. And um, people that are not top leaders are doing hard closing tactics. They're trying to do the interview to close it. And, they're, they're, it's, and I can give you bullet points under this too. Like it, it shows that you're immature. And sometimes it's normal because you're just so new. Because he, here's how you know someone's immature. Is you, you, you hire, like you do a second round, you're so excited, you close them because you want to grow your team and you're like, you do the interview and, you're, and you come out and somebody's like, well, how was it? And to do the third round, how was it? You're like, oh, it was great, it was great. Um, they're, they're, they're locked in. It was great. But then, but then three days later, you don't remember the name of the person, and you never call them for a rehab, and you just think they're just going to magically show up here. Instead of thinking like, wow, there's another 42 offices that do the exact same thing than us in Dallas. Plus, not to mention that this is not the only job available where they can actually get jobs in anywhere in the Metroplex, and they're going to come to me, which I've done two interviews in my whole life, or I've done 17 interviews in my whole life, and they're going to decide to work with me that I didn't iron my shirt this morning. You know what I mean? And I'm here just because I'm just this juice monkey that's excited, right? It's, it's, so immaturity means they forget their name, they don't rehash, they don't put any effort past the second round. So it's almost like you're emotionally lazy. I mean, again, I'm not saying you, right? I'm saying the person that thinks and does this, like they're emotionally lazy because they do the interview and they think it's done. That's the end of my recruiting process. And that's not how it works. To build a team of people that believe in you, you have to put work. Does that make sense? Yes. And like you guys have all done a rehash to a new person mm -hmm. before they started, and did it feel like like you knew they're coming out? Anybody got the feeling that like man, this, they're getting into leadership? Like you do the rehash, and you're like, they're 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 doing it, yeah. <clears throat> right? And it's so much different than when you're like, have you also seen people or even yourself that like they didn't remember the name of the person that's starting? Mm -hmm. Well, you go and ask a leader. It's probably a leader that 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 um, is not growing a lot. Say, like, hey, do you have anyone starting Monday? They're like, yeah, how many? Like, ah, I think one or two. How do you not know? Yeah. Like a, a, a top leader tracks, and they're like track. Like I have, I know, I know this and this person. This person moved to next week. They were supposed to start last week, but they moved to next week because and I followed up with Jamie. Does that make sense? Like a, a non-top leader, they're just like, I think I have two. Like who are they? Have you rehashed them? Oh, I don't have their number. You see what I mean? So well, you can ask. 
You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes. Like they're using the excuse, but really it just reveals their lack of activity and their lack of action and their lack of maturity. So they're using hard closing tactics. They're, 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 they're conducting the second round with no indifference to it. Have you ever sat down in an interview with no indifference? Where like the interviewer is more excited about the interview than the interviewee? And probably you've done it as a part of your learning curve, right? Or like you're, you, you see somebody, they're, they're doing the interview and they're leaning on the chair like this. You're like, you're like, you're all over half the table because you're so into the interview and you're scaring the person, body language. Anyway, so, and you've seen it. Probably some of you guys have hired people like this, right? Have, have you ever felt somebody like, like that you had, like you had almost had to drag him in, had to drag him to the field and drag him through their first few days? You ever hire somebody like that? Mm -hmm. When you drag him through the interview, you're also gonna have to drag him through the business. And they're gonna quit, there's no, no matter what. Um, but if you drag him into the office, you're gonna have to drag him through the business. Anybody remember, I don't know, do you guys have a story of somebody like that, that you remember? Somebody that you really like hired and you were like really excited and they're like, they just didn't get it, like, but you always believed in them. They just, Angel was your first leader, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone else? Troy. Troy? Man, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> like, Troy, we had to drag him in, we had to like, it, he'd be here for five months and show up late on Saturday. He's like, I thought the time was 11. And it's like, Troy. Troy, Troy you've been here longer than everyone else. Troy came here and he was here for six months, never got promoted to leadership. I don't know why we kept him. Never got promoted to leadership. But he could sell. I think he, no, I think he saw like five owners get promoted. Like, like you, Aaron, Isaiah. He saw like five guys get promoted to leadership. They don't give me interviews. <laughs> he would sell three jugs every three months for like 19 bucks. <laughs> but like, so when you, so just watch out and like, and think about people in your team. Like I'm so, I'm super proud of like a guy like Lyle because from the first day I saw him come in, I'm like, man, you're super awkward. You're not going to be good at this. You can do quick. And, and I, and, and I was like, I'm not going to give you a base pay if you do it. So I'm like, I give base pay to the people, but not to you because you're doing zero every single day and you just need to quit. He's like, no, just pay me whatever I make and that's it, I'm not gonna quit. I'm like, okay. And then two weeks later, he got promoted to do it. Like that's a person that's fighting, you know what I mean? As good or bad as he is, which I mean, he, he's improved a lot, would you guys agree? Yeah. He did. So much. So much. And like, he, now, he's getting a haircut, like he looks like less awkward. He's still a little awkward, we love him, we love him. But he, he looks more mature, he looks good, right? That's a person that is, is you're not dragging him in. That's a well-conducted interview versus some people you have to drag them in and the way you know is because you're always like trying to text them like, are you here? You know, if you text them like, hey, are, are, you, are, you, are you close? Because like, you're, you're not even sure they're coming in. That's the person you have to drag through the business. And like you get to the car rides and they're like, and they're the person that's late for the car rides always. There's the person, oh, they're walking. They're walking, there's zero sense of urgency while being watched. Let's imagine when they're unsupervised. Does that make sense? So you can tell, and by the way, that happens to a lot of us when we're not top leaders and we do our first set of interviews, like our first, depends on how quick you learn based on how much you practice, but our first five to 10 interviews, we typically hire a lot of those guys. That you're the one like pulling them in and you're the one doing all the work, but they know. So just recognize that. Like how can I attract and how can I conduct an interview in which people I'm not having to drag people in. I'm not trying to set, do an interview the other way around and just fire people, you know, and like, like be so tough that no one wants to start because I'm not trying to make them think like an owner from the beginning. I want to get everyone in. I'm doing the recruiting and in my head I'm thinking, I'm getting everyone in. But I gotta do it in a way where I'm not dragging you in. Does that make sense? Does it? Cool. You need them, so a non-top leader, right? You need them versus you want them. You, you can't coach people that you need. So when you have, be careful when you have not a lot of people or when you just had somebody quit. Like you're, most people, including myself, we put dates, right? 
and it's all surrounding our pride and ego. For example, I'm gonna get promoted by my birthday. How many of you have said that or have thought that? I'm gonna promote my birthday. And then you realize that, mm, why? Just because it would sound cool that it's your birthday. By the way, that also means you're, that also means we're it, we, because I did it too. We're super immature because then you get, when you're like mature enough, you don't care about your birthday so much. It's just another freaking day. <laughs> but when you're young and, and like you, you, need you need people to celebrate you, your birthday is like an important day, right? But you, when you need people, you can't coach them because they know you need you need them. So if you have, well, careful when you only have one person on your team or two, and you're trying at the same time to push to like a level two or to mastermind, but you don't have enough people. So what you're gonna do is push them to do the sales. And we've seen it almost every time. And there's a part of it that it's healthy, but every time we see a level two, and they're doing it with one person, like Martin is trying to do it, um, I think Kim did it with one person, it's a lot of a push because you have one leader, so you're like, and there's 35 sales to do, and you have no one else. So what happens is you, they gotta do 17, at least, right? Or at least they gotta do 15, so you can do 20. Because if they do 10, now you gotta do 25, right? Yeah. That's rough. And, and it's like a push, like people at 8 p.m., who did it at level two? Jacoby, at Mid like midnight. Midnight, right? Like, that's too much pressure. What happened to Rashawn? He's gone. He's gone. Too much pressure. He didn't come here for the pressure. He'll stay because there was enough of a good relationship to like, hey, let me help Jacoby out. And that's, there's, see, not, not a lot of it is wrong with that. But you can tell it's not the right person. And Jacoby forced him where I think Roshan would still be here if he wouldn't have too much pressure. Now, would he need to be here? Maybe not, whatever. But does that make sense? Like when you have one person, when you need people, you can't coach them. Which is why it's so important that you're using your upline. If you only have one person on your team or two people on your team, that you're using your upline because they, like the bigger you go, the, the, the upper, upper you go in your upline, the more the person's gonna listen. Versus if you have one person and you're trying to, oh, I'm doing this by myself, I'm building my own team, this is my team, and you try to build them all on your own, then you need them. So you're gonna ask them to do more than they're ready. When you, don't, when you need a leader so desperately on your team, you're gonna ask them to teach systems faster than they want to. You're gonna ask them to like, you're like, you're gonna beg them to stand. Like we see it with Tivo. Tivo's a total example of he wants to grow fast to, to the point that sometimes he goes backwards because, I and mean, he's learning, he's doing great, but like you want the, you have nobody on your team. You wanna be a level two tomorrow. So your new guy starts on the first day. What time is supposed to leave on the first day? The new people. Five. Five. And you're like, hey, you're like begging them to stand till eight. You know what I mean? That's how you know that you need them. And when you need them, you can't give them advice because you need them and they know you need them. Does that make sense? Now, if you just want them, cool. And it's a, it's a big reason why a lot of you guys, the more the more I've grown and they've promoted me to, to regional and national, it's some, for somehow people listen to me more. You guys listen to me more. My owners listen to me more, it's super fun. Because they know I make more money, so I don't need them. So if we lose an owner, I'm sad. But like, they, it doesn't affect me. Versus when I only had Aaron, it's so funny with Aaron, because I had only Aaron and Steven for the longest time, and, and maybe one, per, one more person, and or two. So Aaron knew that like, I was his only outside deal. So when I was giving him feedback and whatever, he was super unreceptive. Like he was not receptive to me. And he's like, oh, Richard, I disagree. Like all the freaking time. Well, I personally, I disagree with that. And I'm here thinking like, you're, you're an idiot. Like I just went through that. I just went through that. And I'm telling you how to not lose 10 grand. And you disagree. Cool. But like, freaking idiot. And then what will he, what will he do? Lose 10 grand. No, I but I couldn't even say like I told you so because he didn't listen to me in the first place. But it, whose fault is it? It's my fault because I didn't, I didn't have enough, I didn't grow enough. Now guess what? Then I promoted 12 offices and then Aaron's like, dude, what, what are you doing? What, 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 what's working? <laughs> I'm like, well now that you ask, and now whenever I said something, then it did work, does that make sense? Does it? Yes. Why? Because I didn't need Aaron at that point, and Aaron knew. How did he know? Because I had more people. So now Aaron realized, hmm, what, Richard's actually good without me to work. At the beginning, he might have thought, well, Richard has me on his team, that's why he's so good. Because I'm one of his offices, and I'm crushing a W on the best. That's, you know, back in two years ago. Does that make sense? So when you need them, this is why it's so important that as a leader, you do what all the time? Huh? 
grow, 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 grow. First, first chance. <clears throat> like the best favor you can do to your downline is keep building first chance. I've been telling him like last week, I'm like, dude, just go build five more leaders. What happened to John as soon as he like got five leaders out? He left, or he got promoted. But like he needed desperately those five guys. Does that make sense? So you got you got to grow so that people can never, like you might have eight first generation leaders. I remember Julian right before when he got promoted. Hey, why am I getting promoted? I got nine first gens. I got eight first gens. I'm like, get more. Like, why don't you get more? Why is nine enough? Nine is great. It's a lot. But like, why not? Why not twelve? Like the the bigger you grow, the more effective your feedback, and then you'll feel like you're this better trainer. Well, that you feel like your conversation has gotten better, but it's not true. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So anyway, you need them versus versus you want them. Uh, inside of that, also is what what's important for you. Versus for them. So, and again, like you're more worried about what you want from them, like getting them to leadership, whatever, then, then actually why did they get this job? Why did they accept it and what's their goal? Does that make sense? So anyway, just watch, make sure that people, like that you know what, what's important for them. Because when you know what's important for them, then that's your carrot that you can dingle whenever they need like a push, whenever they're trying to quit, I'm like, I'm like, dude, you started and you told me you wanted to do this for your children. Why are you so upset for a bad day? Why don't we just start another day? You know what I mean? But if you don't know that what they're doing is for their children, then you can't say that. Then we'll say stupid stuff like, well, if you have bad days and you don't have a better attitude, you're not gonna get to leadership and that's not an owner mentality. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have heard that? Yeah. You guys hear that? Why? That, that's just a, an, an upline with a lack of information. Like when you, you're coaching somebody on a bad attitude, well, is your attitude's right? That, that's, hey, the ownership mentality, that's not it. You know? Hey, we're supposed to react really positive to the negatives because that's, that's how we overcome challenges. And like, that's true, you know what I mean? But they don't care. Because they don't care. What's that sentence? People don't, they don't, they don't. They don't care how much you know until they. They don't. Know much they don't care. They don't care, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and it's super accurate, right? You got to know what's important for them. They don't care that the leadership mentality means that when it's raining and pouring and freezing, I should be happy. They don't care. They're just pissed, right? So, you were gonna say something? Yeah. So let's say when you're pushing, right, for like the next thing, how do you not put pressure? At least me, I don't really talk about what I need to get promoted with my people. I'm just like, what do you need? I'm serving. You them. need to be in partnership with with your upline, and he needs to promote your next level. You can't promote your own level. So when you know, you know, you're pushing for mastermind, and then you got good teams like DT is gonna root for you, and you have people that are gonna root for you because they understand that's the same as them growing. But you're right, you can't be like, hey, I'm, guys, I'm a leader away from mastermind, who wants to step sale. it up? That's yeah, one more sale, no. I don't do that. That's why it's, the more you grow and the more people you have, the, what I realized, the more you need your upline. And some people think, well, now my team's big, I don't need Tommy. No, you need him more. He talks to Wade more probably now than he used to when Wade was here. You need, because now Wade's got two offices growing or two offices about to get promoted or three in like waves, like in ch- getting challenged. So the more you grow, the more you need your upline say. Like you go up to him and say, hey dude. And like he might be working on other people and something else. Hey dude, I'm a leader away from mastermind. Should I push that or not? And if he's smart, he's gonna be like, he's gonna go and speak to you, to everyone and to your team. Say, hey guys, we, we just, because everyone knows that he doesn't care. Because for him, he's got other people. So he goes and says, guys, Genesis is one, he's eight. It's 15 sales away from mastermind. We got one day left, it's a push. But hey, who wants to help? I want to see Genesis promoted. I think she deserves it. And you're just like, receive, you're just like shy, like, oh, my upline's great. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> my upline's great, but internally, like th- this is you had a conversation prior with him and you guys partnered up for that message to happen. Because the <coughs> message has to come from him. And even better, if you, if you, if the relationship is so good where the message comes from him or from a downline, then it's, over. Then it's way more effective. You see what I mean? 
Because people could still be like, well, Hamra, of course. I mean, it's Genesis upline. He, he's want her to grow for himself so that he can have a mastermind on his team. And you just want to try to avoid that. But if you can, if, if there's, if the connection and the relationships are so good to where a cross line or a down line can say it, then it's impossible. Then people are gonna be like, wow, there's this guy DT that's under Genesis and he is gonna fight and he was willing to extra mile for his, you know, in, in, in employee's mind, for his boss's growth. Never seen that, that doesn't make any sense. And you just, and you just destroyed the whole pyramid scheme. You just destroyed and crushed so many negatives by you doing that, by you doing that. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Does it? Yeah. So I think that's great. Okay, this one, uh, I'll explain it, and if not, you'll tell me if it makes sense. Okay, so uh, not, amateur person has more of a quote-unquote jack-in-the-box conversation versus a normal conversation. What do you think it means? I just didn't know how to describe it, though. I Maybe mean, like Surprise. immature conversations? A jack-in-the-box is like, like you're coming out of nowhere, and you just have this coming, bam, like a jack-in-the-box. Oh, okay. Yeah, like somebody comes in, you know, and you go up to, you're like, you have no relationship, you have no credibility, and you just have like a really strong conversation, no, not caring at all what they think. There's, yeah, there's no build, there's nothing. And again, it might be a new person that you're dealing with. Does that make sense? Versus actually having a conversation that it takes time. Or somebody has terrible sales and you go up and you suck sales, like, what's up? And you don't listen, you don't ask them to break down their day. You don't figure out what's wrong. How many of you guys have had a conversation where it's like a little jack in the box where it's like you, you go too strong on somebody and then you realize, hmm, let me see what's going on. And then you realize like, like their mom's dying of cancer. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that would affect me. Does that make sense? They have like a legitimate reason to be upset, which definitely affects the attitude. You ever had that? You feel like a total miserable person? So like, watch out. Like, this requires, top, it requires patience. Patience. Oh, but this is the fourth time I've had this conversation. It requires patience to go up to somebody and be like, yo, hey, what's going on? Like, what happened? We talked about this, what's going on? It's not the same for a person to be late that has three kids and, and daycare's closed because it's a holiday than an 18 year old kid that's hungover. It's not the same. One person I'm sending home, the other person I'm letting them stay, right? That makes sense or not? Yeah. So a jack in the box conversation is like a really quick conversation that you have because you're just so, you just, you don't care. So you just want to get the results done versus you just actually engage and actually pull them aside and, actually have a conversation. Careful with doing this when you develop people. So when you guys do leadership quiz, I, I realize, um, I, I, I've been telling Julian to delegate less stuff to Sharon, because Sharon needs to focus more on being a leader versus being an owner. And, and I'm like, look, it looks like the last leadership quiz conversation, which is a very important conversation that can't be jack in the box. And here's how you know, is we do a leadership quiz conversation with somebody that doesn't show up the next day. That means that conversation of, it was a total jack in the box where like it was not done correctly at all. There was no listening. It was just me speaking to a to a you know to a punch bag. Does that make sense? So like right, having the normal conversations like what's going on, doing more listening. You know you have two ears and one mouth, so that you can listen more than you talk, right? So um, another another one. I'll I'll go through these fast. People work, people that work harder on this is a big one. This is this is super frustrating. Is when you see people that amateurs they'll work a lot harder on the business than they'll work on themselves. So then they just don't grow. Because you if you treat this like a job like we're and you do all, like an opportunity job, or you do all the extra mile, you do all the hours, you do all the work, like the physical, you know what I mean? But you're not working on yourself, like you know you're reading, but you're not really reading, you're not really learning what you're reading, or you're just saying you're reading, you're just opening the book, sending the quotes, so you don't get kicked out of this group chat. <laughs> you know what I mean, like that's, that's because you don't really want, you're working harder on the job than you are working on your self-development. Super frustrating, because you won't grow. 
And, and if you ask most of the owners, you'll realize after they finish the training, they're like, dude, I've changed a lot as a person. Like, your parents will tell you, like, wow, you've changed a lot. Like Avon's parents, I like, gave her crap forever, and they're like, dude, Avon, you've grown so much. Like, you're such a mature individual. And, <laughs> and that's a big deal for Avon, right? Or Sarah's, Sarah's brother. Sarah's family started recognizing a new person. I, I sat down with Wade's mom, with John's parents, and I, the, the person John has become. Like, they all talk about how, how the person just became just a better individual because they worked on themselves versus, I'm sure you guys all know somebody in here that just, they're, they're working the business really hard. Here at every leader's meeting, they're trying to do all the interviews, they're trying to, trying to, but, but then they go home, they're not working on themselves as a leader because they think they're, they're too good to be a leader. Does that make sense? Do you guys recognize what I mean? Okay. How would you fix that if, let's say, you have somebody like that? You don't. Like, you, just, you know, you just grow in front of them and you just be a good example with actions and you just grow. You don't fix it. Super frustrating. You can't fix it. It's impossible. You guys all can think of at least one leader that's like coming here to everything and, and doing whatever, yeah? And doing whatever it takes, but then they're not, you know, they're not working on themselves. I'm like, let me be a better leader. Like, like, if leadership scale from one to ten. What's my leadership scale? Where, where am I? You should just, you should ask yourself, where am I? You should always be trying to move up. And the way you only, the only way I know to do that is reading, listening to uh, people, a podcast, things like that, and then associating at a, at a higher level, people, people better than me. I, I, there's no other way. I mean, if you have anything else, please don't. There's no other way to do it. You have to associate with better people that are clearly better than you and that can stretch you and that can make comments that don't feel comfortable. And then you have to read, read, read great people, great books. And then you have to do it for months, <laughs> for months until you see a change. You also have to do it without expecting a change so that a change happens, does that make sense? So um, when you work the business really hard, it's only it's frustrating. You'll, you'll make good, good sales probably, but, but you won't really do anything else. Um, and this is this one. This next one is we all know it's super obvious, but we still all do it. Uh, it's super obvious, and everybody's like, "Yeah, that makes sense." But then you still all do it to a degree. Um, you listen to other people who don't have what you want. And you say, no, no, that makes sense. I only talk to people with fruit on the tree. And we all talk about it, but then you then then you then you get disappointed when your spouse that doesn't have what you want is telling you something. Or some crossline. Or some or some family member. Or even some owner. It could be an owner out there that doesn't have what you want and they're telling you some advice because they feel entitled to it because they are an owner, but all they're doing is dumping their negative stuff on you. You know, and you have a lot of people visit here, a lot of owners visit here, and not all of them are positive. Right, so hey, you, you, a top leader is not listening to a person that doesn't have what they want. So just, it's very important that you analyze and study people first before you listen to them, right? Because you gotta know what they have, so then you can decide if you listen. What, what does that mean you're gonna have to do, or a top leader's gonna have to do? Hmm? Check, what, what, what? Spend time. Spend time? Like ask questions, right? Like, yeah. I need to know what you got. So I gotta be. I mean, you're not gonna go out, out there asking people, "Well, how much money you have?" Right? That, that's weird. But like asking questions, what do you have in your life? But also that requires for you to know what what you want. You also need to know what you want, so that you know who to listen to. You can tell when people don't know what they want. What who do they listen to? Anyone. Anyone. So then their life is typically a mess because most of most anyone's is crappy people. You guys see that? You guys all have people on your team like that. We all do. They don't know what they want, so then they're listening to whoever. And that's typically the mass. It's typically TikTok, Instagram, so garbage. So then their head and their brain is full of garbage. And that's also the food they put in their system, and that's also the results of the life they have. It's garbage because they listen to everyone, right? So another one. Important for top leaders. Don't let other people, other people's commitment level, affect.
select <coughs> affect your energy level. We've all had this, where you hire the wrong person, you drag them into the business, and then they're not committed, so then you have now a bad attitude. Anybody had that or remember having that? Yes. <laughs> like, well, my new guy this, and now you're sad because your new person sucks, or your new leader's not here. Don't let that affect your energy level. Your energy level should only depend on you. Not on it. Okay. All right. I think uh, we broke the tip. Too much money on the chair. You want it too heavy, bro? Too heavy. We need to get rid of these chairs. so much you're gonna learn think, think about the last time you talked a lot and learned anybody remember no you can't <laughs> <laughs> you can't be talking and learning at the same time you realize yeah. so in order to learn about people about your team your downline your cross line what they need what they want what do you have to do more of this, this, this. that's super hard especially two years, two years one man. yeah for choleric people you're like excited to give people the answers because you know that they're about to fail and you just want to tell them the answer and here's the answer and shut up and just do what I say and it doesn't work. It's like in a relationship. I've just learned this over the last year uh, or a few months being married, <clears throat> reading a lot of books about women and realizing like all the times that women complain uh, to their spouse, which is a lot, they actually don't want solutions. So every time I was looking to my, listening to my wife, like she's halfway through some problem, and I'm, I'm like, I, I'm a business person, right? I got, I got this. <laughs> I'm about to solve it. I'm like, I, like I literally have two ideas. I'm like, like she's telling me maybe some problem, with her brother, mom, something like family, whatever, and I'm like, and I'm, and I'm like, got, got, got. I'm, I stopped listening because I'm like, I got my solution. And then I'm trying to give the solution and then it frustrates my wife. It's a solution. Like, you don't want to solve it? And it's like, they're never gonna say, no, I don't want to solve it. But the answer is no, they don't want to solve it. <laughs> they just want to be heard. And dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I've read this from multiple different books and, and multiple different counselors. And one-on-one, -on -one, women will deny. They're like, no, I'm not trying to complain. No woman ever is going to say that because then, then their pride gets affected. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to vent. Women will never say that. But in a group setting or in a counseling session or in a book, women will say when their pride won't be affected, like, yeah, we're trying to, just, I'm trying to find a person that can listen to me. And you, that, I'm trying to find an emotional partner. Somebody can share emotions with me. So basically the man becomes like a can of emotions for the person. And that, that's all they need. And I started practicing and I realized, I'm like, wow. And now I listen to my wife and I have the solution because my brain just immediately goes to the solution anyways. And she's talking and I'm like, I got it, I got it. As soon as you're quiet, I got the solution for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I noticed. I got you. But I noticed and I started practicing it and I started just not giving the solution. <laughs> and, and, and practice this yourself with your teams like and, and, well, and practice with your team I was I'm waiting I'm, instead of giving the solution because I've been reading books I'm, like, I'm not gonna give a solution I'm, I'm always she'll probably ask because that's why she's telling me all these things 
because she obviously wants my opinion in my game plan. So she'll probably finish and then ask me, hey, what, sh what do you think I should do? Or what would you do? I'll just wait until she asks for my game plan solution and then I'll give it to her. They never ask. <laughs> <laughs> they never ask. So like the conversation ends and they're like, Thank like, you. How's your day? Yeah, there's, there's no ending to it. There's, it's like a, a hug or like, or like you got to react and acknowledge that you're listening. Like, wow, like, and how does that make you feel? Does that, how do you feel about that? That, that's, that sucks. That really sucks. How, how do you, how do you feel about that? The maximum you can say is something like, is there any way that you would like me to, to support you? And then they're like, no, there's nothing you can do. And you're realizing you've got seven things to do, but, but, but they say, no, there's nothing to be heard. They just want to be heard. And that's all. And that's why, dude, I'm telling you, that's why most, most marriages don't last because the, the, the guy won't, won't listen. The guy will just interrupt and solve. And that's never what the lady wanted. The lady just wanted to be heard. So that's it. That make sense? Yeah. So yeah. You talk, don't talk. Mm -hmm. Stop talking too much. Okay. Let, people, let people ask you for the solution. You'll realize you have a winner on your team. Again, I'm now we're going back to relationships to business, okay? It's a little bit different, but it's not really. It's still a relationship. You'll have a winner on your team when the winner's like, what would you do? What's the solution? What's the solution? What would you do? I know you've been through this. What do you do? Well, that's what he's been doing to me all day. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. I got one. You got me one. You just find four or five a year like that. You're good. You'd be a millionaire on this. But you need to find four or five a year that proactively they come to you and say, what would you do? Oh, you must have. You've been working here for four years. You've promoted all these people. I'm sure you've coached people on what cars they should get and what cars they should not get. So you probably know more about cars than a lot of car salespeople. Oh yeah, yeah. So what would you do? I'm like, oh, thank you. Now I can give them the feedback. But if I impose to him to buy a Honda Accord for three hundred dollars a month because that's the car that lasts the longest and it's the car that's the less flashiest, does that make sense? He won't. Did you know what I mean? So most leaders, most people talk too much. So just let them do most of the talking. Just let people do most of the talking and collect, collect that. Almost done, I got three. Um, amateur people, so top, non-top leaders, they'll make the business. Sound easier than it is. All right, Danny. So if you're a new leader, or, or if you're not a veteran, you're not a top leader, you're, you're gonna avoid telling your team you're, like some negatives because you're gonna make the business sound easier than what it really is. The business is tough. You guys hear me all the time saying people, oh, and you quit, and now oh, this person quit, and that oh, owner failed. You guys hear me say it? Mm -hmm. And I might be a little extra sarcastic because that's my personality, but I say it with a mission. I'm like, I want people to understand like, 60% of level twos, I want people to think about that when I say, hey, 60% of level twos get to ownership. Like, I want people to be thinking, so, wow, that means that if I don't get to level two, I don't even have a 40% chance, right? I want people thinking, like, most people will fail. And I say it, I'll own it, I'm like, this is, it's hard. Like, going through the door to door, Expecting 37 no's, but required to still be positive throughout those seven for six months at a time, plus the turnover, the weather, the uh, elements, and this is tough. <laughs> That's a tough job. Most people are going to quit. And I want people, as soon as I can, maybe not in first day of orientation, but as soon as I can, I'm going to tell people how hard it is. And sometimes you're like, you're make, you make it too easy. It's like all rainbows. You know what I mean? Because you want them to stay and you realize, and like some, you, like you protect them too much to where you're kind of hurting them more than anything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you guys will come up to me and it's like, you're like, hey, how can my new person get a day off? Or how can my new person get a book recommendation? Like, make, 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 they got a mouth, like make them talk. Have you guys ever do that? I've done that. I've done that to my owners. I'm like, hey, owner. Hey, Larry. Caleb's got, got he's got a question. <laughs> and, and Larry's like, tell Caleb to call me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and I get, and Larry calls me and he's like, what's Caleb's number? I'm gonna call him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that actually sounds easy. That makes sense? So don't make the business sound easier than what it is to protect people. Yeah. Uh, 
how do you find the balance between like you know like asking what would you do like you're applying yourself versus like trying to figure it out on your own? Because I feel like sometimes I'll be like, what what would person be better than I? It's like, what do you think? Like, oh, I don't know. So how do you find the balance as in when do you ask to and like, oh, I should probably figure this out? Um, what's that? Your upline could make mistakes too, right? But as an upline, I would never say, what do you think, if it's the first time you encounter that. Right. Well, I'll try. Mm -hmm. But if it's the second or third time you're going through this issue, I'm a man, what do you think? Why? Because I'm trying to train you to think on your own. But if it's like your first, first round never, and you're like, well, how would I change this? And I'm like, well, what do you think? You mean, dude, I've never done it. Right? Yeah, like once I know one time, I don't really have to So if you know one time, time, then I'm gonna ask you, what do you think, why? Because I think that you could fall in the trap that you use your upline so much that it's a crutch, but now that now, now you can't be independent of them, which is really the goal. So I'm gonna ask you, what do you think? You're gonna say whatever, and whatever you say doesn't matter. I'm gonna say, yes, that's it. Because really it's whatever you believe is actually what's correct. Typically, whatever you believe, it's actually what works. You ever believe you have a good day in the field? And then you go in the field and you have what day? A good day. You ever thought you're ever gonna go in the field thinking you're gonna have a bad day, you kinda suck and you're feeling low on energy? And what kind of day you normally have? Trash. A bad day, right? Typically what people believe is what happened. If somebody goes in the Spanish territory believing, oh, dude, I'm gonna sell 10, they go and sell 10. If somebody goes in the Spanish territory thinking that it's gonna, it's gonna be hard, it, it's hard. So that's why, it's why it's training people to think is so important. But I would try not to um, ask people what they think if it's their first time. So make sure you're investigating when somebody in your downline is like, what is that is? And I'm like, hmm. Like in the field, it happens a lot. Is this the first time you lose your attitude or your second? Like, I got, I got it. What happened the other day? Like, I'm gonna ask questions. Like, it's a different answer, right? Every time. Does that make sense? Um, this is a good one. Not using upline. Nobody, nobody will recognize this, right? This is one of those like, um, like in the like in the resumes, like you're never gonna sit down in front of a second round that you ask, "Are you driven and ambitious?" And somebody's like, "No." You'll never find that applicant. However, do you know people in the office that are not driven and ambitious? They're total potatoes that are just so lazy, don't you? But in the interview, what do they say? And they're total dogs. I'm a waffle right? fry. Yeah. So this, so this is one of those that nobody's gonna say that I do it. Like nobody's like nobody's gonna be like, oh yeah, that's not me. But 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 it happens, right? Not using upline due to pride. Does that make sense? Like, oh, I'm too good, like, I have my upline, whatever. And like, you don't use your upline because you think you're better or you think you're doing better. And like, your pride doesn't allow you to use your upline because you feel like you should know or your ego is so high that you think you don't need your upline. It's total crap. There's things you can do without your upline at that, that certain level that you know how to do. But some people don't use their upline because of pride. You guys probably have all seen it. Like you see people in your team, then you're like here sitting thinking, I got seven ways to fix your day right now. If you just asked, but they don't ask. <laughs> so you're like, I gotta go do second rounds because they're gonna quit. <laughs> 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 yeah, because you cannot impose that, but they're like, no, no, I got this. Or, or you ever give feedback to somebody and they're like, I've already done that. It, it's it's and again we all hate it but we have to you have to learn how to dance around their ego a little bit there, Be like and really because really the answer is like would I actually give you this feedback if you've done? It? Why would I come here waste my time to give you feedback if you've already done it? That doesn't make any sense, right? So when you're like telling somebody like yo like the pitch this or the pitch this and they're like oh yeah I've been doing that or like somebody calls for resourcing in the field and I'm like hey like it sounds like you're enthusiastic no no I promise I'm really happy at each door. Like, I might not sound like it here, but I'm like, at the door, I'm good. No, no, you're not. Because if not, you would be at six, and you're at zero. You say something, Caleb? Oh yeah, it's also like when 
when guys are so afraid to actually like approach the rough line and like you find out like they have all these problems. Like you know their problems already. You know that they have questions, but you find that out through their, their cross lines. Because they're so afraid to actually come to the F1 actually. Right. Um, there's one more. So how do you address that? Like the, the more like the, oh yeah. I, I think the only already, way. Like I'm already doing that, blah, 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 blah. The only way, the only way I've seen effective to help that is just by again, it's just a, it's a lack of humility, right? But just by sharing, sharing stories. So I don't tell people what to do, but I tell them what I did, right? So I want to make sure they listen to the stories, not only in that moment, but also proactively. Like, if you hear my story, if you like, you can maybe use the meeting that day. Hey, look, Tommy shared his story today, and he shared his story. Do you remember he was he was doing the same thing you're doing? So I'll share my story, I'm like, hey look, I get it, you got it, like you obviously got this, you're gonna figure it out. I'm just telling you, when I first started, I was answering the same than you. Wanna know what happened? Or what happened? I didn't get it, I didn't have it. So my problem was that I thought I had it, like you, but I didn't, maybe you do, because you're way better than me. But for me, I thought I was good at it, and I wasn't. I just would hate for you to go through three weeks of realizing that versus I can tell you right now. <laughs> so hey, totally up to you. Um, some of the fastest growing people are the people that even though they got it, they still ask for questions and apply it and ask for feedback because there's always room for improvement. And that's why you heard the story this morning of Tommy that he was you know, coming as a GM and managing people, he still came in as a student asking questions. When is the last time you asked the question? Oh, I haven't. So anyway, not saying, like I said, this is, you got it, you got this, you get it. I'm not trying to damage their ego right there. I'm not trying, I'm not looking for like a total pride surrender here, but I'm sharing stories of other people that were also cocky and had to figure out the hard way how to apply feedback and how most people quit when they don't. I'm not saying you should think like this, this is what I thought. Does that make sense? That's the only way. The last one is don't pass negative <coughs> down line or cross line. And then the same thing. Nobody, nobody that you ask does this. But everybody's been guilty at some point. Top leader does not pass negative to downline or crossline. Like being negative is being emotionally lazy. Because it's very easy to complain. Like we all can complain about everything. We can all come and make sarcastic comments about complaints and things about the field and things about the interview. My new guy sucked, this, and I didn't get an interview for this long, and this, and that, It's very easy to complain. It's emotionally lazy. Why? Because it's really hard to just, if you can only let positive things come out of your mouth, that's really hard. There's a book called uh, The No Complaining Rule by John Gordon. And he has a challenge on the book that Tracy did. It was extremely hard. It's like you have to do 10 push ups every time you say it. See if you can stay 24 hours without saying not one negative thing about anything. About the weather, about like nothing. Zero, one, zero negatives. Challenge, you, challenge yourself to do that. What was the name of the book? No complaining. The No Complaining Rule by John Gordon. Mm -hmm. Super hard. See it for 24 hours, you can stay positive, <laughs> I'm telling you. Trace, and Trace is a pretty positive guy. You guys all know Tracy? Yes. Pretty positive guy. He lasted two hours. <laughs> because you'll make a comment, I'm like, oh my, my, I lost my book, it sucks. Boom, negative. Uh -huh. On the ground. John Gordon. Gordon. G-J-O-N, and then. Gordon. Gordon. So, don't pass negative to your downline. Like, you, Putting negatives on your downline about a territory, about the field, like it just like, even if it's a even if it's a you like Richard, but it's a true negative. I'm preparing them. No, you're just planting a seed for them to multiply that excuse. I got kicked out. Like sometimes it's positive negative, right? Like I hate. I did two sales, but I got kicked out four times. So like my two is good. My two is bad. So I got kicked out four times. <laughs> what? Why do you got to say that? just to satisfy your own like that, you know what I mean? So just watch out. Don't pass negatives to your downline. 
Don't share personal problems with your downline. Find someone else, find another line. To your cross line, even worse. It's super selfish. When you go talk to your buddy friend, that's why we're super on top. We, we gotta get better at people networking, cross networking, you know? Because they're passing negative to your cross line. That is selfish. That's because now you're hurting your upline's business. So Ken goes past negative to Genesis and only hurts Alejandro's business. Super careful when there's a, an expansion. We have to be super careful with this. It still happens. But now I'm Kim. I'm, I'm talking about my bad day to Genesis. All I'm doing is hurting Alejandro's business. So you directly are impacting the financial situation of your upline. Because it's their business, you realize? Yeah. Like your cross line is your upline's business, right? But again, I just, I'd rather be emotionally lazy and tell people this and this and whisper some negative because it's hard. It's hard to be positive all the time. It's hard to, it's, it's, it's very, it's gonna compete against your pride a lot to only share negatives with your upline. Cause that's hard. Cause you know your upline, it's probably gonna, they're gonna listen to you, but it's probably gonna challenge you at the end of it. And you just might not want it. You might not want a challenge. But you know you're gonna be challenged. Because the only purpose of you talking to your upline is for you to get better not for you to complain, right? That's why it's hard. So then you go to your cross line and you hurt everyone else and then, you, and then you're wondering why am I not growing? It's because you're probably spreading all these negative seeds all over everyone and then you're just picking up harvest which is not growing. So don't pass negative to your, to your downline. When, when people understand this, if you just read all of these again, make it a playbook for your new guys. Like, hey, maybe you have, you include this on your when your new guy gets their first quality, and you're like, hey, look, you're gonna be a leader. Let me tell you the rules in our team. Maybe you use it, let me tell you the rules in our team. And then the ones that make sense, you know? Hey, I'm looking for somebody that's gonna work really hard on themselves, improving their leadership capacity. Not so much working the business. Working the business is good, but I want somebody that can work on themselves, right? Hey, looking for the best listeners, looking for people that uh, use their upline. Like, hey, use me as much as you can. I can be more effective for you than you can be for yourself. I just can't, I can't do your own sales and I can't do your own interviews. But other than, that, other than that, I can do all the conversations, I can do all the perspective, I can do everything else. You just gotta do the labor, right? Um, so, does that make sense? Is that good? I like it. Yes. Yes. Well, hopefully you guys can use it. Anybody, anybody wanna? Comment on anything or any questions? Yeah. Cool. Well, let's have a bad Saturday. Yeah. Let's be negative. Let's all find a cross line and complain to them. Say, hey, your upline sucks. <laughs> let's quit. Let's get five people out of text message and just quit. Welfare on Monday. Unemployment line. Mm. Ownership doesn't work. <laughs> they don't make money. They don't make money. Like Tyler. Tyler bought a ring from Meredith, bro. That didn't, like, the little box that holds the rings, I was the one holding the ring. The box didn't close. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. The box wouldn't close the ring. Why? Because the ring was so big. <laughs> Gosh. And Tyler is like, three months ago, was eating eggs and fruit because he didn't have no money. No money. He was paying himself $200 a week, even when he had good sales, because the when Meredith was open, his business, her business needed to make money. He's eating eggs. And now he's buying a fucking egg size ring. <laughs> <laughs> it was super cool. His dad married him. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's so cool. His dad was the efficient. And I think that's pretty cool. And then they went to this, uh, where did they go? To this uh, hotel, and not Motel 6. They went to some super hotel. It's Motel 7. Motel 7. <laughs> <laughs> In Irving, and they're getting their honeymoon there. No free phones there? No free phones there. Anyway, let's hey, have high expectations for people. Let's finish the week strong. Let's promote Sunday Savages. Let's um, let's grow. And yeah, love you guys. Thank you.